building Perseverance rover was a great project, even though I had to face a couple of challenges. In case you've missed my uh, review of LD002H when I shared initial pictures and a video of the landing, I'm going to play it now because why not? It's cool, a little bit silly, but mostly cool. Accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane, about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. Sky crane maneuver has started, about 20 meters off the surface. We're getting signals from MRO. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. While I didn't get into much details about this project alone in the main video, I thought uh, the entire adventure deserves another follow-up video with a, a little bit closer behind the scene look on how I made it happen. Just like another million people watching the stream, I got excited about the Perseverance landing on Mars, being streamed, etc. So I decided to celebrate it as well. I had a, a 3D printer, resin 3D printer, and I needed a key model, and I thought that printing out the model of the Perseverance rover would be perfect. Knowing the plan, I've scoured the internet to find a nice model that I could print. And the first model was a Perseverance model designed for FDM printing, which, to be honest, it lacked in details and I knew I wanted to take a couple of closer shots, especially the ones that would indicate that my rover is on Mars. And for that, I needed a much more detailed 3D file. Thankfully, I came across this beautiful GitHub and there was a Blender file in there uh, for Perseverance as well, a very detailed one. However, the file wasn't optimized for printing at all. Now, I did double with Blender a couple of years ago, but uh, I think the peak of my achievements was the picture of the rocks uh, rendered in Blender, so I had a bit of catch-up to do. The model was very detailed, but there was no way I could print it as one, so I needed to separate the parts and figure out what's printable and how to make it happen. After separating the parts, I've picked the biggest one that's going to be on my printing list. That way, I would know the total scale of my rover. Now, it turns out that the value itself was 4950% of the original scale in Blender, and that's what I rolled with. This is where I started to learn more about supports and how important supports are in SLA printing. Because thick supports would be very hard to remove, and I damaged a couple of parts in uh, the process, and the thin supports or limited supports carry the risk of not having a print emerged from that at all. So after a couple of tries, I finally figured out almost everything with two challenges still outstanding. It was a suspension, which I didn't have a clue how to really slice in parts and print efficiently. So I actually tried to print it as a, as a one piece and I succeeded. And wheels, which mm, I needed to go back to Blender and fix because the spokes in the wheels itself and the ridges on the tire threads were, well, too plenty and the spokes were too thin to actually make the print possible and viable. But the six wheels of printer had to do because I was behind on the project and even though imperfect, I come to realization that, uh, well, that imperfections kind of show that uh, rover has its mass and it looks like actually exerts some force on the wheels. So I've rolled with it. I mind the pun. I've taken ages to clear the parts, but the best approach I found was to remove most of the supports with clippers, leaving bits of supports leaving attached to the print, and then smoothing the surface out with a Dremel, which did actually a tremendous job at keeping the print intact. Granted, it took forever to get to that stage, but once the model was primed, there were barely no signs of damages caused by support. So yay, that's a way to go. At this point, I knew it's going to be quite risky to actually introduce moving parts, so I've used epoxy to glue and everything together, and I've painted the model. It's not my best paint job, to be honest, because uh, I only used four colors and I had limited amount of time, but maybe moving forward, I'll invest in an airbrush and a new set of paint so I could actually do a better job next time. But as you can see on the pictures, the model looks 
quite decent and especially once processed uh, in Photoshop, it kind of looks real. The landing video was a bit of an accident, I didn't plan on this, but since the drone arrived from repairs and it was ready to get tested, I figured out I might as well try to uh, recreate the landing. It was the same week as the landing video was released by NASA, so I was really excited to give it a go. The drone comes with a gimbaled camera that can be directed uh, downwards, so it would kind of look like lowering the rover from the sky crane. But at this point I wasn't sure whether the drone is strong enough to actually lift the uh, rover altogether in the air. I took a bit of a risk and tried it in my back garden. At this stage I didn't have any pictures, so if things went sour I could end up damaging the print and the rover in the process. Thankfully my first test went really smooth and I was able to uh, fly the drone around with the rover attached to it using two uh, pieces of string. Looking at the footage, however, the rover was slightly too far from the camera, so I knew I would have to shorten the length of those strings. That introduced another problem. I've always used auto uh, startup or auto takeoff using my drone, and it would uh, get the drone into a hovering position approximately a meter above the ground. It was too far away from the rover, and I really wanted to have a control how fast I'm going to take off. So I switched to manual takeoff and I shortened the pieces of the string. Now after a practice run it turns out that that was a good idea and I had a much better result. So very excited, I decided to go to Mars. Now Mars it's a Roseberry topping which is a small hill just nearby that has an area that looks like, well, Mars. Providing that you're gonna frame your pictures well and remove any grass from the background. Obviously, there is no life on Mars as far as I know. But first time I got in there, it was too late. It was already after sunset and I was running out of sunlight really quickly. It was probably good enough to take pictures, but definitely not good enough to try the landing, which I attempted anyway. Now that fail attempt caused a uh, drone to spin out of control and actually smash the uh, rover against the ground, causing small damage. So if you take a closer look at the pictures taken at night using artificial lights, you'll notice that there is a part of the rover missing, which later I found, thankfully, and I was able to glue it back in. I was obviously a little bit down, provided I didn't have any usable footage of landing, but after reviewing the pictures taken in artificial lighting, I was super pumped to go back in there earlier on the next day. And this is something I did. I arrived in plenty of time before sunset, so I could capture that red light highlighting entire surface, and that provided to be a big help when editing footage later. With plenty of daylight left, I could tell what I'm doing and I had a better control over the drone, which means I was successfully able to land it several times. Now I've picked the best attempt for the landing video, obviously, and then I film a couple of other takes just to make sure I have enough footage, which later proceed with uh, pictures of the rover in a beautiful sunset. What was left to do is to take the pictures back home, edit it on the computer and make a short little video of the landing. I have to admit I had plenty of fun trying it out and I guess it tells from the pictures which I'm really proud of. I hope you enjoyed the behind the scene of this project and this is definitely not the last uh, spacecraft I'm going to print using Creality LD002H. In fact, I already have a Voyager. And yes, it needs priming and painting, but this is something I'm going to do next and post probably pictures on my Instagram. So if you fancy seeing the progress on that, well, you'll find me on Instagram in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll definitely see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.